Okay. <coughs> right, so just waiting on the stream to catch up. <coughs> oh, well, that's quick. You may have seen, so you can actually find the video. Um, I posted a little snippet. There we go. Um, <coughs> basically, doing pixel collision so you're not bound to a full tile. Um, so you can do slopes and stuff relatively easy. This is pretty straightforward. So, we'll do a quick stream showing how to do this from scratch. Um, you can do an awful lot of this, <coughs> excuse me, offline to build up tables, but um, um, I'll get the yeah, we'll get the, uh, the gist of it kind of going here, um, and we'll do it all kind of in, in app. I'm just getting it sorted. Right, so first thing we need is a tile set. And I think we'll do a um, 16 by 16 tile. <coughs> so let's do um, Just need some basic tiles. <coughs> um, I'm not going to use the flipping mirror at the moment. We'll um, I'll talk about it once we get going, but for the time being, we'll just do kind of simple, simple tiles. So some tiles. And let's go tile set by sixteen. All good. And let's do um Um, so, 
Trust that sounds familiar. Okay. I'm going to do a view just so we can kind of zoom in a little bit. Um, Okay. Right. So in here, let's paint some tiles. Okay, that gives us something to kind of measure against. Um, we'll just do that as well. Right. Okay, so from this, we should just have yellow. <coughs> right, so we've got a closing. Um, so the idea with doing pixel collision is for every tile you basically store the space that it's got. It's just that simple. Um, I mean it's not it's obviously not too much. Um, you are just talking well, for this kind of case it's uh, it's in 32 tiles by course it's four tiles for the whole lot. Um, by 16, so I mean you're talking bytes really, it's not it's nothing huge. Um, and then when you ask for a collision, there's this point in here, you get the tile, then you look up the height and then you just see if this is above or below that line, it, it's really easy. So let's um, do that, so we need an object. <clears throat> In a minute. Oh, because it did it as an inherited room, didn't I? Let's, let's kind of copy all that stuff. Okay, that's irrelevant. This needs the object. Uh, no, it is a piece. That's fine. Okay. So. <coughs> Normally what you would do is you'd have a, an offline process to go and build up all these tables and, and so on. Um, then you'd load it in or you'd have a big array. Um, what I'll do for this version is I'll do it all in here in GameMaker just so it's kind of flexible and everybody can kind of see what's happening. Um, so We'll have two phases to it. One is we'll have got a room that is uh, initialization. We will draw the tiles, work out all the heights, um, and then we'll go into the room with the actual tiles, and then we'll do a collision with it. Um, so we'll set up some macros first. 16. How many tiles do I actually have? So let's say 16 tiles, because most of them are empty. Sixteen. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then the draw. So now we'll set our table. Um, uh, 
if it's a global one. Um, and that'll just stay there for the life of the program. Um, we need the surface. Basically enough to hold all the tiles we want to decode. Um, if it was a bigger area, you'd, you'd do a square for it. Um, we also need a buffer. Um, which is the full number of bytes. Sixty like that by number of tiles times the width of the tile times four. Oh no, wait a minute. This is two. So this one is for where we're going to copy the buffer. Um, And that's going to be a tile fixed. Yeah. So surface target. So that's black with no alpha, so it's totally transparent. That's surface green. It's sure, clear. So that's basically just completely emptying the screen out. The screen out. <sighs> um. Our so. Uh, tile data, so that's just the tile number. Um, frame zero. The reason you get frame is because for the animating tiles, you could be drawing a specific tile, but depending on the sequence, you might want it to have the water and stuff, so we put the frame in as well. I times tile size. Oh, and zero as well. Okay. Okay, so now we've got a surface with all our tiles on it that we're interested in. Um, and so the next thing we're going to do is actually let's just verify that that's actually the case. So we're going to make another object. Actually, let me do it. I can just do it in this one. So no, let me go. Um, go to next. So, clear and stay there. These steps, that's fine. And I'm going to set that. So in the player, you will just draw that surface. Okay. 
That should just draw a stack of tiles. And it draws a stack of tiles. Lovely. Okay. Um, so we now have um, our tiles. Next thing we want to do is grab the surface of the one day we'll get around to adding more modes to this so you can do more stuff with it. Okay, now we've got that, what we're wanting to do is look through all the tiles and count the spaces in the columns. Um, Within that, we just want to do our, our size. So it loops right along the whole row and each thing it counts columns. Um, it's like Size tile max. That's the size of the row. And four, because it's ARGB, so it's four bytes. And the format of that is I want to use like two. Maybe that one. Okay, now if that is transparent. So the half is in the top three. Um, if it's transparent, you keep counting. If it's not, then we're kind of done. So keep counting the column until we either get to the end of the tile or we hit um, uh, an actual pixel, then we break out. Um, at that point, um, into that column, we're going to store our count. Okay. So let's just dump this out and see what the first few are anyway. Two sixty four, let's see. See what that does. Okay, so down here we've got 16 because there is a space here as well actually. So there's nothing here, so you're gonna get 16s for all those columns. Then it's gonna hit this block, which is all picks on the first one. So they're all zeros. Then you've got the slope, so you've got 15 spaces, then 14, 13, and so on like that. You can see that here. Then it gets to the top, these two pixels are at the top, and then it starts going down again. So that's looking fine. So that's hunky dories. Um, so let's take 
get rid of this now. And then I need to see more. And okay. So this is basically built up our height table, which is nice and simple. Um, I use buffer get surface quite a lot actually. It's um, quite handy. If you look at the lemon stream that I did, I used it all through that for doing the um, replacement and getting the mask and stuff. It's quite useful. Buffer set surface should be fixed in the next version coming out. Uh, there was an issue with that. That should be fixed. So you could actually build up procedural stuff, stick it in a surface and do things with it soon as well. Okay, so uh, next. Right, okay, so that should be fine. Now we want to basically just test. So let's make a sprite. I want to do it one by one. Normally we plot a point, but the problem with that is, is it doesn't scale with views. So you do a sprite, they kind of scale. Right, that and you know. I guess pixel. pixel. Nice. Tiles. Okay. Um, and then I want to do draw sprite next. S pixel comma. Comma nice one right one okay so I'm going to use the mouse as a collagen tester then we can just move a little dot around so you can kind of see a little dot on the mouse and then I'll be able to kind of go in and out and just test to see if things are in collision. Um, okay, so let's do a step event for this now. So, um, S That'll give me a true false back. Let's see. Yeah, it'd be nice to be able to just create that as we said. Um, okay. Let's just take you into here and make you a bit wider. Blah 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 blah. Right, so first thing we need to do actually before I do that, what are you complaining? Oh right, because I've not used it yet. Okay. So if collision right. So we can kind of see it going wrong basically. Right. Um, so we need to get the tile where that pixel is first. Well, actually, which also means we need a create event here. And oh, Tiles. Uh, 
Alt Tab. Oh, not the ankle. Tab. Always struggle to find that one. Tiles. Now then. So, tile map get at pixel tiles. Now, I've got to say, I do tend to put in these just so they're a little bit nicer to use. I use underbars to specify that it's uh, an argument coming in, just when you're reading your code, it's a little bit easier. Um, right, so that gets me the tile. Um, I then want to get the pixel into the tile on X, so that gives me the column, and that will be um, X and tile size plus one. So that's basically because it's a power of two tile size that I'm using. You can do it with mods and stuff as well if you, if you want it. Because it's part of tile size, um, take one down and that gives me my mass just to say, okay, give, give me those bits, get rid of everything else. Um, and I also want to add on tile size because each one is 16. So find the tile index along and then the column of that. Um, once I have that, um, and once I've got that, I need to actually get that value out. So that gives me the the number of spaces effectively in that column of that tile. Um, now I've got to get the y position down of the argument here, which is kind of the same as that x1, um, which is y and tile. Oops, that should be this one. Same kind of idea, that gives me the pixel down within. Again, you could use a mod operator if you wanted. Uh, okay, right, that goes interesting. Let's just put that there. So, if uh, the height in there is zero, then that means it was a pixel at the very top. So, no matter what y is, you have a collision. Similarly, if it was 16, that meant our little check went all the way through, um, so it's completely empty. So that means you'll never have a collision. False. Um, lastly, if the y, y position, so that's our 0 to 16 value going down where the mouse is, is bigger than the number of spaces. So we think about at the top, if it was solid, it'd be zero. If there was one pixel left, then it'd have one. So if the y from the mouse was zero, this was a one, then it'd still be empty until we crossed over. So if that's bigger than or equal to that, then that's going to be true as well, because that means it's into the block. So this part space, this part solid. As the mouse comes down, the point comes down, this is an empty. As soon as it goes into that or equal to, equal that, greater than, it's in a, into a collision. So then it's true. None of that's happening. Then it's going to be less than that, so that'll be false. Uh, false, yes. Okay. Um, step. So let's use that here. Okay, let's see what that does. Uh, oh, there you go. So, 
we know that this is actually within a tile here. You can kind of see, came up here and we cut off this bit. So this space here is a tile. But until it actually goes into these parts, then it's not given a collision. Again, it's down there, so I just so we can kind of do a check of its in. It's obviously this is coming from the top. If you wanted to do collisions from all the different angles, you'd need separate tables and you need to count columns in the way. You could keep the whole mask or the whole tile set um, as a bitmap, and then when you do a collision, you actually go through and check. Um, but that'd be really slow. Um, so you'd be better keeping heights of the different things. Um, also, if you wanted to actually use the flip and rotate features of the uh, of Studio, then you'd have to basically do what the flip does. So you'd end up getting the height down this way. Then you go, okay, what would happen if I flip that? So you'd flip this tile. So you'd have to kind of go from you know the bottom down and uh, and basically work out all the different tables. So you've got flip X, flip Y, rotate 90, uh, which is three bits. So that's eight different tables you would need for all the different combinations. And you just have to, without anything, it go down with a flip on X. Um, you'd have to basically get the exit along, then go to you know mirror that and go down. For rotate, you'd have to rotate all and kind of go backwards and stuff, and just trace in different ways through that tile. Um, but once you had that, it would just be a matter of within this function, because I haven't done this here, tile index mask. Uh, within this function, when you get the tile, you would just check the top bits to see if it's flipped, rotated, and then you would use a different table. So it's still really fast. I mean, you could do it as a switch statement or a lookup or something. Um, it, it'd still be fine. But this is obviously still, that's not a lot of code to do a pixel check. That's still, still pretty good. Um, so what we'll do, um, let's create a little blob. Center 16 by 16, so 16 by 32 will be the bottom. Um, we'll do basic gravity on it. So let's just go on true. The DX is gravity, DX equals equals to which isn't what I want to call that. Uh, D1 equals graph, D1 10, equals 10, and then just match that out. So That'll just follow the ball. If I had a ball on screen, I did not have a ball on screen. M zero. Um, maybe I should have done that sixteen by sixteen, but then.
Why am I aware of it? Okay, not quite sure why I'm not seeing anything on that. Oh, because I'm in draw. I've got that as well. Draw. Okay. Now we should just kind of see it fall. There you go. Right, so what we'll do is we'll just check So if we hit something, then move it up. Something like that. Because it's in the middle at the moment, so I'm just going to eat. We've got to watch for fractional gravity, so that's the only thing. Because um, they'll kind of roll over not badly on you. You see this kind of bounce, which is annoying. Um, and that. Sprite index, image index. Um, I'll do it there as well. Yeah. There you go. Um, is that by a little bit? I might have just, the sprite might just be too big, so that's 8, 16. That should be all right. Oh, there you go. So again, I'm change the color. Now, so this would get interesting now. That's very much the default. Um, the, there's a thing coming to help fix that. If when you resize the sprite, it doesn't get, it doesn't change. There's a new automatic mode coming that will automatically change the size of your resize the sprite. Um, that should be in the next version. Um, so. Let's just kind of add some very simple left right movement. And there you go, you can kind of see it's now sitting on the background. Now, although I'm looping up through things, you could, what you really want to do is to have a function to say, okay, sit me on this. Um, because currently I'm having to loop up going, is that in, is that in, is that in, is that in? But actually, you know on whole 16 by 16s what's in and what's not. So if this sprite was away down here, and I, was, I asked it to sit it on, it would look at this and go, well, that 16 by 16 is completely solid. Move up to the top of that. Then it would check to here and go, well, that's got 10 pixels. So sit it on top of that. 
So within a couple of checks, you can jump right up uh, rather than kind of going, is that in, 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 um, which is kind of what you want to do, really. So but there you go. I mean, that's kind of doing slopes. Um, fairly easily. Um, put in a simple jump in there as well, I guess. And what would that be? That would just be sending the y to be minus 6. I suppose. That's quite a high jump. So there we go. As I say, this is just coming from the top. If you wanted to collide coming up the way, you would need another set of tables that scan from the bottom to the top rather than the top to the bottom. And similarly, if you want to go from the left to right, you need to scan in and have another set of tables. Um, but the idea is the same. And these ones are quite sharp, which is kind of why it looks like it's going into the block. Um, this kind of one on the top is pretty much what you'd end up with. You'd also kind of do a state to go right, I've landed, so that when you start running left and right, you don't have this kind of falling gravity thing that I've got here. You would just ask it to sit it on top of the ground each time. Um, and it would just stick like glue, which would be fine. And it's only when you start jumping you would kind of do whatever. I mean, what you could do is Bounce in there. So oops, Daisy. <laughs> it's gone off the top. Because I have no checking going up the way, it just goes right through. Um, I'm also not checking that. I'm actually on the ground before I start jumping, so I can kind of start jumping midway through again. It kind of gives you the gist. So, again, you can see the player ball, whatever you'd end up with, going over the ground perfectly happily. It's a tiny bit of code to do the check. You can see on this mouse the little pixel there as you go up to the edges, you know. You get in perfect detection of, of being out, and then as soon as you go in, you know it, it's kind of hitting exactly where you'd expect. Um, so we'll just have a quick look at the code. Right, so for building, <coughs> oh, I've got our tiles. They can be anything, literally anything. They need to have a transparent background, but aside from that, you could do it with a colour as well. Um, we create a surface the size of all the tiles that we want to draw. Um, we need a buffer that can hold all that, which is basically x times y times 4. We then look through and draw all the tiles, just one after the other. Um, if it's a particularly large number, you'll probably have to do it in a grid, which is fine as well. Um, and then we look through all the tiles counting the space at the top. Again, if you want to do collision on the, underneath, you'd also have a loop counting space up the way, or to the left, or to the right. Um, if you wanted to use the flip and rotate that's in the room editor, so if you decided that you know you want to have this tile and you want to be able to rotate it. Or flip it or whatever, um, then 
it's you're going to have to do another kind of table to go. This tile, but in this position, has these columns because they are they are obviously different. Um, so this is just a simple one. You look through, looking for something that's got a transparent background. Although, like I say, you could have just a color as well if you wanted a pink background or something to go. This is my transparent. That would do two, and then you store the count in this. So effectively, there's just a stack of counts. Um, once you're done, you free the buffers and you free the surface. It has to be said, if you've got an awful lot of tiles and you want to do all the rotations um, and maybe the different directions or whatever, uh, memory will probably start going up quite a lot, particularly if you're storing it as an array. You probably want to store it as a buffer because buffers, um, you can have a lot more space in a buffer um, because you can store all these as bytes because they only go up to quite small values. Um, and looking up a buffer with buffer peak like this is still pretty quick. Um, certainly for the collision stuff, it'd be more than fast enough. Um, and that would let you have lots of tables without throwing lots of memory away. Um, so the actual check, where you get the tile map, which is normal. Um, and then it's basically just check this point. For this case, as I say, you could easily do one that is sit me on the ground and wherever you are, it'll just kind of snap you to the ground. And that would just be a matter of looping up through tiles. And then once you get to a tile that's got a bit of space, it takes the height and just sets you to that height, which is pretty straightforward as well. The collision function itself gets the tile map at that pixel. Um, gets the tile at that pixel. It then gets the exposition fraction into that cell. So if you've got a 16 by 16, wherever that is, it needs to know which column you're in, so it gets that. Um, and because we're using a power to cell uh, tile size, we can just mask off the lower bits um, and keep that number. If it wasn't a power of two size, you'd have to do a mod value and get the remainder instead, which is fine. Um, and then you might apply by the tiles, obviously it's in a row, so you've got that tile number across, then adding on the column it's in. Uh, once you're doing that, you can just get the, the height out. Um, and we then do the same for the Y to see how far into the tile downwards uh, the collision point we're interested in. After that, it's just a simple matter of comparing the different values. If it's uh, zero, then the column is full. It's always a collision. If it's 16, actually that should really be tile size when you get down to it. Um, if it's a tile size, then um, that means the tile, the column's totally empty, so you'd never collide. Otherwise, if the Y position is greater than the height, greater than equal to the height, then it's inside or below uh, that column, so it's always going to collide. Um, otherwise, it's above it, and it's always going to be empty. And that's it. That's all there is to it. It's not a lot of code there to do pixel collision. Um, so you can kind of see it there. It's fine. We've got the dot. You can kind of move around perfectly on things and go in. It's 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 fine. Here we go. Quick stream. Um, well, quickish stream. Hope that was understandable.